And once again, we are back for another episode of Ability to Learn, the show about interesting facts and trivias for your daily knowledge. Oh, I forgot to point you guys, for your daily knowledge. Happy Thursday to everyone, and yes, I have a different approach on my episode for today. That will be, I will probably stick to this style um, of kind of like a streaming style from now on. If you're thinking that, hey, wait a minute, I think I saw this style in this channel before. Well, because you are not wrong. I actually learned this from Ian. So, Ian, thank you. Hopefully this format can help me, um, you know, sound less like a robot or sound like I'm reading my script, even though I'm reading it right now. There's script, but we're both going to be talking, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think this is kind of more of a natural approach. I like it. Anyways, today we'll talk about uh, gallbladders. We'll talk about bluebirds, uh, people in the sea, in the middle of the sea actually. And for our stuff of the day, we'll talk about things that are found underwater. We're going underwater, guys. So if you're ready, uh, you know what to do. Our daily thing that we're doing is we're doing exercise. So let's do our exercise first. Let's go. All right, time to do some upper body workout, people of discovery. Let's do some warm up first, okay? First is the basic head turn. While we're doing this, some friendly reminders though, perform these exercises on the pace you are comfortable with and ask for assistance if you need any. Then let's do some shoulder rotation. Let's start with the rotation backwards. Then move on to the forward rotation. Remember, the pace is up to you. So if you wanna challenge yourself, you can do it a little faster, or on the other hand, Feel free to slow it down. Next will be the arms race. As you can see, I'm raising my hand on a shoulder level, then all the way up. You can raise your hand on either level actually, or you can do both, so it's up to you. Quick pause right there, then let's do it again. Alright, next is the upper body twist. When doing this exercise, make sure you pause at the center before twisting to the other side.
Okay, now that the warm-up is done, time to do some higher intensity exercises. We'll call this one the Archer Stretch. Assistance may be needed in order to perform this exercise. For the last count, try to hold this position for at least 3 seconds. Okay, now time to switch to the other arm. Hold it, and done, awesome. Next we'll be doing slow jabs with resistance. like the last exercise, try to hold your last count for at least 3 seconds. Okay, now switch to your other hand. If you're unable to do this exercise on both hands, hey, it's definitely okay. Alright, next is arm curls. Again, just a quick reminder, perform these exercises on the pace that you are comfortable with. Also, if you need time to catch your breath, uh, take a pause, then relax for a bit before continuing. All right, we are almost there guys, so bear with me. You guys are doing great. Next is shoulder press. Let's start with the right hand. Hold your pose for the last count and hands down.
Okay, time for the other hand. Now hold it, and down. Finally, let's do some inhale, exhale. Breathe in, then breathe out. Hey, congratulations! You did great today! Thanks for joining me for today's workout. If you need time to rest, you can pause this video, get some water, wipe your sweat before going on to the daily show. Other than that, I'll see you later. Okay, so how's the exercise? Okay, let's go back to our um, what was I gonna say? I forgot. Sorry. The daily show. Daily show, yeah. yeah. We're right. gonna go back to our daily show. Cut. Action. I don't have to say cut. Sometimes I'll include it. Because you said oh, it's more natural, right? Okay, okay. Kind of like when we're talking when uh, we do uh, the daily show here. Okay. So they'll, they'll be familiar with it. All right. So, yeah, well, okay. today we have uh, the Old Faithful live scre streaming, not screaming. Streaming, just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I actually kind of forgot to mention that um, Ian uh, got me, uh, fixed me a awesome background, a live one, actually. It's called Old Faithful Live Streaming Webcam by Karen Middleback? Yeah. Middlebach. I don't that, know, kind of like that. Of her, uh, that's the name of her, her YouTube channel, yeah. so uh, courtesy of. Yeah. yeah. Uh, unfortunately, right now while we have the the picture up, you can't see the old faithful like spew water. Oh, oh, oh! Right oh, there, there, right you there. Go. You see it? It's on my head. Yeah. <laughs> it's warming up your head. So it's a cold morning, and I it's just put <laughs> gel on my hair. Oh, well, okay, well, it's a background. It's not gonna affect my well, hair. Well, let, let's make sure we move on to the next slide then before <laughs> it messes up your hair. All right. Okay, today's observances. Okay, so first on the list, we have the gallbladder good health day. Okay, your gallbladder is a small pear-shaped organ on the right side of your abdomen, just beneath your liver. Um, the gallbladder holds a fluid called bile that's released into your small intestine, which helps with your digestion. So uh, this organ's uh, I mean, this organ works kind of like a pouch, you know, like you know, your pouch or your small purse or something, well, which you can store uh, things for future use. But in this case, uh, it's storing the bile. So whenever your body needs bile to uh, dissolve uh, food, um, that's where it's getting it from. And just like any other organs in your body, um, if not being taken proper care, well, it can go bad and negatively affect your health. So if you constantly eat foods with, that are high in cholesterol, your gallbladder might be not able to, you know, not be able to dissolve all those um, food or those cholesterol. So chances are you'll develop a gallstone. Well, bad cholesterol, right? The bad cholesterol, yes. Actually, well, if, if there's something bad happening to your body, um, that means you're taking something bad. Yeah. So Because there's good cholesterol, there's 
bad cholesterol. So uh, it, the same goes for uh, the fats. There's bad fats and good fats. Yep. Okay, so what are gallstones? Uh, gallstones are the uh, hardened bile that can cause severe pain in your upper right or center of your, of your abdomen that could last for hours. And additionally, they can also cause nausea and vomiting. So that doesn't really sound good, you know. Okay, so now you know what could ruin your gallbladder. What you have to do now is to try to eat the opposite. So meaning uh, try to eat food with low cholesterol. Additionally, food with good um, monounsaturated fats like those found in nuts, avocados, and peanut butter uh, can help your gallbladder uh, stay healthy too. Perfect, since we just had guacamole day, I believe. Oh, that's cool. Oh, no, that's last week because this, this video is for next week. <laughs> this video is for next week, so... <laughs> your gallbladder also could get hyperactive and that's when people get heartburn. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Even though it's called heartburn, it, nothing is actually burning. It just feels like burning. It kind of, yeah, it just felt like it, but it, I, I don't think it has something or it has anything to do with your heart. It's just pretty yeah, much the it's, name. Yeah, it's because it's the, the, um, the area that it feels like it's burning. Somewhere near, on your heart yeah, area. Near, near the Close, heart. Yeah. yeah. All right, next up is, <clears throat> it's called Bluebird of Happiness Day. Now, I myself is not familiar with this um, or the, uh, uh, the bluebird being associated with happiness. I just learned about it today. Um, actually, bluebird has been associated with happiness in European and Native American folklore and even Chinese mythology. Actually, one of the oldest examples of a bluebird in myths is from the uh, pre-modern China, which was around 1100 BC. To be exact, it's 1122 BC. A bluebird was the uh, messenger of um, Shi Wang Mu. Uh, they call her the uh, Queen Mother of the West, and again, it's uh, part of the uh, part of the uh, Chinese mythology. Who began life as a fearsome goddess and immortal. Aside from that, the bluebird can also represent hope, cheerfulness, prosperity, and good health, and oh, and renewal. So if you see any, if, if you see any of, uh, or at least a bluebird anytime this week, I hope, uh, I don't know, it would give you a little bit of happiness. Uh, you know what would give me happiness if I adjust the camera a little bit more? Wait, I'm going up. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you I'm could, flying. Can you point oh. at that thing that I'm trying to get rid of right here? Oh. Uh, yeah, you guys see that? What uh, is that thing? That's Yeah, I'm tr and, and there's a doorbell, so I'm gonna... Oh no, now my hand's getting cut. There you go. Now it's perfect. Oh, okay. There you go. So I'll answer the door while JR continues with the show. Oh, thanks, Ian. Moving on to the next one. It's called World Maritime Day. Okay, the word maritime means, uh, you know, close to the sea or by the sea. So, but this, uh, for this observance, we're actually talking about activities that involves ships by the sea. That includes ships for private or commercial travel, um, ships that are being used for fishing, and even military ships. Some of these ships actually stay in the middle of the sea for a long time. Actually, I remember my sister. She's uh, uh, she served in the Navy, uh, and she boarded one of these uh, military ships. I, I, I kind of forgot the name. Um, but this ship actually traveled from here in California or actually, uh, yeah, California, close to San Diego, all the way to Japan. And she was in the sea for at least uh, three months, I think, or more. I c it could be more. Yeah, but, you know, y you guys get the idea. Okay, what about you guys? Have you imagined yourself being in the middle of the sea for that long? I did. You did? Yeah. Well, for how long? Uh, maybe more than three months. I just like the sea. Oh, that's cool. I don't know. For me, I'm I'm not sure, but I mean, I like the sea, but not really staying oh. in the middle of the sea. You know, well, I guess as as the, long as there's Wi-Fi, I guess I'm okay. <laughs> the longest but, I've been was a week. Was a week? Is it a cruise? No, it's just a ship. It went from the the north of the Philippines to the south oh, of the Philippines. Oh, going south of the Philippines. Yeah, and it was cheaper to go that way instead of airplane. So True. We, we went that way. 
But I, I ended up enjoying it that way anyways. I'd rather be three weeks being able to roam around the ship than like being stuck sitting down on an airplane, you know? I mean, I bet you guys would also like being on a ship if it's, uh, I don't know, like a Disney cruise or something, oh, you know? Oh, that's true. Um, yeah, but uh, also, if I remember correctly, one of these cruise ship uh, actually was stranded for a long time somewhere in New York because of the uh, outbreak of the coronavirus. That's probably the only time people wish they were they weren't in a cruise. Yes, just because there's a, a pandemic or well, I guess before it was just an epidemic that was yeah. happening, and they were you know they instead of spreading it to uh, outside the ship, they had to make sure they quarantine inside the ship, and uh, that that kind of took so long. And of course, if you're not really doing anything. Yeah, a day or a week or even a month will feel like yeah. a year you because know? basically the cruise has ended and they're still in the ship yeah <laughs> so anyways guys if you have any other thoughts about being in the sea or if you guys already had uh, make sure you leave a comment okay moving on next is world punctuation day so today is a celebration for these special characters that contributes on how our sentences, sentences and phrases should sound and express. They also contribute in a lot of passwords now. And a lot of passwords, yeah, these special characters. They, may, they make you add them. Oh uh, yeah, actually some of the website, they do require you. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, so I am helping some of the staff, uh, you know, create accounts online and all, and one, uh, some of their some of these websites are requiring special characters and uh, uh, sometimes you know you really don't want to put in any special characters because uh, you're not really used to it as part of your password before and but but the website's not gonna let you um, register if you don't put any of these and you yeah. know so, so sometimes it could be tough uh, that's why I always recommend if you are going to write a password you have to write it down or put it on your phone somewhere but just you know if have you a write record it down, you also have to keep it somewhere safe. yeah you have to keep a record of it because you know uh, once you lose I mean you can always reset it but it's gonna be a hassle uh, you know mine mine is a little bit different I don't write it down but I always remember it Okay, because, that's good. Because the combination of letters and numbers and exclamation points um, is like a quote. Oh, okay. The name of the website. Okay. I translate it through my code and then it turns into a random. It will hey, be like yeah. A random password. So. I think that could work too, you know. Some, uh, well, I did one time when it comes to password, um, I had to put a special character. So my password was the the text version of the special character and the special <laughs> character so i like, was like oh, okay. question yeah. mark and then at the last part i put a an actual question mark oh, you know okay so i mean just a thought but you know well i changed it already guys in case you wanted to hack yeah, my we, account we, you we know we wouldn't be talking about it you know? right i talked about mine because you were not gonna fi figure out what my code is yeah. or you guys don't even know my email so <laughs> it's not gonna work all right some of these uh punctuations are period or question mark or exclamation point that's was only that? if there's like five of them you shout it what if there's five exclamation points you shout it oh so what does one exclamation point uh, do just like i like a more surprise. of an emphasis uh, emphasis yeah like exclamation point oh exclamation point there you go i even put like on my script, I even put like all caps on that part. <laughs> but sorry for being loud. If I, you know, if, if I was loud, I will fix that on the video if it's too loud. So oh. it won't. It, they they won't hurt their ears. Yeah. Thank thank you thank you Ian. Well, I'm kind of new to this, so I'm, I'm I guess my volume the my voice volume is not that uh, used to it yet. Because when I was recording at home and I didn't have my own mic, I have to yell because the camera is far from me, <laughs> you know, so. So today's observance. Yeah, but of course I adjust a little bit. Okay, so uh, by the way, with the help of these punctuations, uh, the readers get a clear understanding of what they are reading, especially, you know, on novels and uh, storybooks. Like if there's a question mark, obviously it's called question mark. It sounds like they are yeah, you, a question Yeah, imagine mark. if there's no question mark and you're reading something. And then, you know, uh, let's say one character would ask something, but it's on a 
like yeah, they used period instead. Yeah, it, you it, wouldn't it, it, know. It, well, you would know because of the structure of the sentence, but it would be confusing and tougher to read. That's true. Yeah. Uh huh. In fact, in Spanish, they use two of them: one at the end and at the start. They have an oh, upside yeah. down one. The upside down one. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. And don't, don't worry. While we're talking about it on the editing, I'll add that upside down question mark on the screen so you guys could see it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Or I don't know. Maybe you can uh, flip. <laughs> my wallpaper but everything's gonna get flipped yeah it's if right. I could just like turn this upside down I guess it's the same thing alright and our last observance for today is Cherry's Jubilee Day okay Cherry's Jubilee is a dessert it's a dessert dish made with obviously cherries and liquor uh, typically uh, I think this is Kirsch which is a type of brandy an alcoholic drink which is um, subsequently flambéed and commonly served as a sauce over vanilla ice cream. Do, do they know what a flambé is? Flambé, uh, if you guys do not know what flambé is, it's... Uh, I was gonna say it's it's heating up the top, but it's not... Yeah, uh, wait, I'm yeah, not well, sure. For, Maybe Ian first, can help me out with that. Yeah, so what do you do is the cherries... Um, Let's say the cherry desserts are in a plate or wherever you're gonna try the flambe. Right. Then you pour the alcohol on, to, on top of it. Uh huh. And well, then you light it on fire because the oh, alcohol okay, yeah. will burn. It's it's not just heat up. You actually light it on fire. Yeah. Okay. And then the fire will burn off the alcohol to remove most of its you know harshness, alcohol content. Uh huh. And then what you are left with is the cherry. Plus it turns a little bit sweeter because it's been under heat. Okay. And then the alcohol flavor without too much of the alcohol wow. sting. Okay. So like but, but there's still at least a little bit of alcohol. Of course. Yeah, You'll okay. still taste it, yeah. Um so basically when you say flambe, it has something to do with burning the alcohol. You can't really call anything flambe if if there's no alcohol included because it has the to fire burn. The has to be directly on the alcohol. Uh-huh. Okay. So if I was I was cooking something on a pan and then I put alcohol in it. That's not a flambe because the fire is under the pan. Right. So you have to actually light the alcohol on fire. That okay. Yeah. Uh, the recipe is gen- generally credited to uh, Auguste Escoffier, who prepared the dish for one of Queen Victoria's Jubilee celebrations, widely thought to be the uh, Diamond Jubilee in 1897. Okay, now I'm not really a fan of cherries myself. Uh, I mean, I I do eat cherries, but I most of the time I eat cherry flavored foods, but not not the actual <laughs> cherry, you know. But of course, for today, it's all about this dessert. Uh, what about you guys? Uh, have you tried cherries jubilee before, or do you even like cherry in the first place? Uh, whether you like it or not, try to comment down below. Okay. So we're moving on to today in history. What happened? You know, things that happened today. Let's go to our first one in 1789. The uh, ju- judiciary. Okay, I'll try. I- I'm gonna try to say that again. The judiciary. <laughs> why? You can't. Well, why? Why is it hard for me to say it? Uh, the Judiciary Act. There you go. Because you're reading it. Act. It's, it's one of those words where while you're reading, you have to slow down. Judiciary Act. But once you know what the word is and you only look at the... You, you guys know when we read words and it's a word you're familiar with, you only look at the first letter and the last one. Pretty much. And then the middle one is kind of um, a blur. Actually, uh, there was this place in LA. What? Oh. Now we have a new wallpaper, guys. It's called the Canyonlands National Park in Utah. I guess we changed. Did we change? Did they change it? I think so. All right. So before we continue, we're gonna cut the video, and I'm gonna change this uh, text at the bottom to reflect that we are watching what, whatever you guys are <laughs> yeah. seeing right now. And again, I think this is more of a live um, view, also, which is all, which is yeah. awesome. Okay, guys. So our we are new, back. Yeah, our new background is now the Canyonlands National Park in Utah. In it's the, it's not live, but it's in 4K HD. So earlier it's kind of blurry because it's a live webcam. Yeah, uh-huh. but this time it's very clear, and the 
while it's not live, at least it's uh, it makes a good uh, background. Uh, it's by the amazing places on our planet YouTube channel. There you go. And if you guys want to see more, um, you know, check out his channel. Yeah. And uh, let's go back to our today in history. Okay, where was I? Oh, yeah, it was. Uh, we left off where I was really having a hard time pronouncing the yeah. word judiciary. Ju judiciary. Ju what? Judiciary. Judiciary. There you go. Act of 1789. What happened is they passed. By, it was passed by Congress and signed by President George Washington. Remember George Washington? Everyone should. You Everyone guys have should. Seen a dollar before. Yes. <laughs> Establishing the uh, Supreme Court of the United States as a tribunal made up of six justices who were to serve on the court until death or retirement. Uh, that day, President Washington nominated John Jay to preside as Chief Justice and John Rutledge, William Cushing, John Blair, Robert Harrison, and James Wilson to be Associate Justices. So those are the uh, the first uh, group of uh, the Supreme Court. Then two days later, all six appointments were were confirmed by the U.S. Senate. The U.S. Supreme Court grew into a, the most important judicial body in the world in terms of its central place in the American political order. According to the Constitution, the size of the uh, court is set by Congress and the number of justices varied during the 19th, 19th century before stabilizing in 1869 at night. In times of constitutional crisis, the uh, nation's highest court has always played a definitive role in resol resolving, sorry, for better or for worse, the great issues of the time. Next up, uh, in 1988, Canadian sprinter Ben Johnson ran the 100-meter uh, dash uh, in less than 10 seconds. That's a pretty cool uh, achievement, pretty actually. 100 meter, it's like 10 meter in a second or less than a second because he got it yes. at, at exactly 9.79 seconds. Yes. You know, so he won gold at the uh, Summer Olympics in Seoul, South Korea. And fortunately, his celebration was cut short because three years or three days, sorry, it was three days later, he tested positive for steroids. Okay, so that wasn't that amazing then. Uh, yes. And, you know, you cannot really take steroids if you're an athlete. That's a big, big no-no. That's, you that, know. That makes you be able to do things that is not your own ability. Not your, not your own ability yet. Not your, what your natural body is capable of, you know. Yes. That, that's why you have to train. Um, anyways, he denied it and instead claimed that he was taking an herbal drink. So, <laughs> uh, well, but you know, uh, these tests are always, uh, uh, how do you say it? Like, uh, they're always strict and they're always, uh, yeah. maybe not always, but at least they are 99% 90, reliable, you know, because again, they're, they're taking athletics seriously. It's not like, hey, it's just a regular uh, game. Though. Yeah, so I, I mean, you take pride in what you do. So I, I would say that um, we hadn't had wars lately because we have the Olympics. If, yeah. you, if countries want to squabble, they just, you <laughs> just know, the Olympics. they just send their best athlete and kind of uh, compete with the other country's athletes. You know? Yeah, that's true. That's true. It, I don't know. Well, I think for me, it's a good way to actually settle things, you know, yeah, and because more us, peaceful things. Us people, us humans, we just like competition. And back then they did it in wars and people die on those things. And mm -hmm. it's not very good. And then they probably came up with some, hey, uh, I really wanted to compete, you know, a friendly competition and all. But uh, yeah. how do we, how do we kind of... The, the word friendly got inserted in there. There you yeah. go. <laughs> how do I, how do I, how, how do we keep it friendly? Yes. And that's, I guess, where... Uh, sports or olympics started you know the, you represent well, there, there, a country of course there's other re there, they the, did. the real yeah. reason is different but i would imagine that it was a side positive that got into mm -hmm. that got thrown into it like when they started the olympics they're like oh what while we're doing this why not why don't we just settle our differences in this in right the, instead of war you know <laughs> that's true uh the uh, international okay after that the international olympic committee 
refused to accept accept his explanations. Well, basically, you know, uh, there are tests. There's not only one test. There's going to be multiple tests to prove that he was taking that uh, substance, which is the steroid. And we kind of laughed at his explanation. So that kind of yeah. shows that <laughs> I, I don't think it's something that someone would easily accept as true. True. Yeah. Um, and then... Um, so the committee refused to accept his explanation and Johnson was stripped of the gold medal, which was then given to the next person, uh, officially supposed to be the first, uh, the first, yeah, the first runner of or the actual champion because he did not use any um, steroid. Performance so, enhancing drugs. Yeah, it was given to Carl Lewis. Um, yeah, so come on, athletes! If you if you're participating in all, well, not just athletes, just no cheating. You no guys, cheating in general. No you cheating guys in general. know my stance on oh, cheating. Yeah. Uh, Gotta play fair and square. I mean, that's the point of the game is to have yeah. fun with what you can. But if you're, you know, if you're gonna be cheating, then uh, yeah. I don't know. The, we, you guys have been here when we play our uh, games on the afternoon. I never like any cheating. So yeah, like I said, it takes a it takes away the fun of the game. Exactly. You know? Unless you're one of those people who enjoy uh, cheating. <laughs> I mean, yeah. The, but the, that's yeah, that's kind of not a good way to enjoy games. Yeah. Well, it, it robs the enjoyment from other from people. From other, yeah, exactly. Yeah, even though you're enjoying it, other people who's playing with you don't enjoy it anymore. <laughs> and that's, you know. Maybe if you're playing by yourself. You're, yeah, it's okay with that because hey, there's no competition. We, we used all. to do that. Remember when we play video games back then? It's that's just us, like single player. We single you, player, you, yeah. We put cheat codes, and it's fun that way. Yeah, <laughs> but if you um, if you have other people competing with you, or you know, playing, playing with you, with you uh, yeah, don't, not don't, a good thing because now you're taking it away from someone instead right. of you just you enjoying. It. Exactly. For our notable figure born today, we happy birthday to Scott Fitzgerald. Uh, you might not be familiar with him. I, I, I mean, I, I know some of you will if you are if you like reading books, you know. But Mr. Scott here was an American novelist, famously known for his work, The Great Gatsby. Well, that's why they should be familiar with it. It's, if you have read it, well, they they I should have read so, it. Yeah. Uh, well, because you didn't go to high school here. Okay. Oh, it was part of high school. Yes. Okay. Um, so if they don't know him, it's just probably just guys just forgot, you know. Probably. But if you guys are like me who actually haven't heard of him um, or the, uh, what do you call this, his famous book, The Great Gatsby. Which I don't like. Basically, this novel tells the story of Jay Gatsby, a self-made millionaire, and his pursuit of Daisy Buchanan. Buchanan. Or Buchanan. Yeah, yeah. Daisy Buchanan, a wealthy young woman who loved whom he loved in his youth. And I heard it's uh, it's more of a tragic story. Yeah, it's about the American dream because back then they keep talking about the American dream. Like if you work hard, you you get a lot hey, of money, you become a billionaire. That's However, the American dream. However, it becomes dream. a tragedy because like, yes, he, um, he, like you see, it says he's self-made millionaire because he worked his way up, mm -hmm. but he started losing everything anyway. Oh, yeah. so I guess that is the tragic part. He, yes. That's the tragic part of so, it. So, but but I don't like it because it it feels like a soap opera, and I don't like watching those things. A lot of drama. Oh, I see. However, I know a lot of people love those kind of things, and if you love soap operas and dramas, this is a really good book. Okay, that's it. good. Yeah. Uh, if you, however, uh, are not a fan of books or you know uh, novel books, um, I think they made a movie out of it with. Uh, Leonardo you DiCaprio and uh, Spider-Man, um, Tobey Maguire. You, you know, should be familiar. you should be liking books. You should be liking books, yeah. Because um, even if you go to movies, they do change a lot of things compared to books. So if you wanted to get the original context or original, uh, yeah. The thing uh, about is books is um, story it is, of the books. It is exercise for your imagination. Right. If you all you do is watch TV mm. and movies then you don't get to imagine things because they're already they're showing you visually yeah yeah the, the, it's the director's imagination being brought to you right uh -huh. uh if you're reading books that's or, the main difference yeah. of watching and reading yeah uh, if you're reading books you have to kind of imagine what's going on even those games that i showed before the art the role-playing games mm -hmm. you have what to are play those the, games you have to play the old ones because like in the old ones if someone is happy 
it doesn't really show on the screen because it's just a tiny pixel of a guy. Oh. Yeah, so you have to imagine how he actually, like his facial expressions and all that stuff. So, I thought you were talking about the game, uh, the Oregon Trail, was it? That is also something that you have oh, to yeah, imagine, there you, go. you yeah. know? Uh -huh. Like, I mean, you still see something, but it doesn't really show. Uh... It, it tells you that someone got bitten by a snake. Yeah, but it doesn't show you. You read you it. Got, yeah, you read yeah, it. Yeah, but then you have to imagine, oh man, that must have been painful. <laughs> and, and during this time, they don't have doctors with them, you know. Uh, that That's the kind of thing, you know, that helps your imagination. I hope you guys remember that game. It was a pretty awesome game. <laughs> yeah, we, we never made it to Oregon, I think. Moving on to our place of the week. Actually, uh, continuing our place of the week, which is Fiji, I think. Uh, we'll talk about a historical town in, in the country called uh, Levuka. So formerly the capital of Fiji, Levuka is the largest of the 24 settlements on the island of Ovalap. From the 1820s onwards, Americans and Europeans developed the town as a center of commercial activity, building warehouses, shops, and houses around the villages of the indigenous population. The town was peacefully ceded by the British, or sorry, the town was peacefully ceded to the British by the King of Fiji in 1874 and continued to be inhabited by indigenous people who outnumbered the Europeans. They influenced its development with local building traditions being used throughout the town. So Levuka is a rare display of the 19th century Pacific port settlements. And for this reason, it was listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2013. If you guys uh, remember last, uh, I think it was last, oh no, no, it's going to be two weeks ago now that we discussed another historical town in, let me remember, Barbados. There you go, Barbados. They had a historical town that was also part of the UNESCO World Heritage. And if you remember, if you, uh, you know, if, if you remember the, what we talked about, uh, the UNESCO World Heritage, they are actually a, a group preserving those um, places in order to, to preserve the history and the culture. And, yes, you know. because uh, unfortunately, even though we said that, you know, this is, uh, the sports has taken over war, there's still wars that go on. Well, yeah. Uh -huh. And sometimes they go on and destroy places that have some sort of historical value mm -hmm. uh, UNESCO World Heritage sites are protected and and they you you'd be you'd seriously be in trouble if, if you, you ruin up, them you yeah, know if you ruin them and not just through war if you're like vandalizing them mm -hmm. you know, if you're if you're part of a country that has one and then you're not taking care of it by not renovating you anything. will get uh, accountable for it yes. yeah well, and again, if you guys remember, uh, UNESCO is uh, a group that is consist of United Nations. So, mm -hmm. and well, well, not all countries actually are part of United Nations, though they're just very small uh, number of countries that are not part of United Nations. So, but most of most of the countries in the world, they're part of the United Nations, and they would, uh, they would abide by it. abide, do their best, and you know, it's it's really nice to know that there are places or there are people group of people who are actually trying to preserve history so you know we, we keep the record of their uh, past and also that, that that also means the town will remain as is uh for forever i guess you yeah know? you don't uh, have to look at the book or a picture book to find out what it looks like mm -hmm. you can actually visit it yeah you can actually visit and whatever you would see Today, if you visit, uh, that's probably the same uh, settings that uh, that they had a hundred years ago, you know, which is cool. Um, okay, so if you happen to visit Levuka, don't forget to check their Wild West style colonial building, just like what you guys see. Yeah, that kind of like a uh, Wild West parlor. It's style. like a, it's a what it, it's it's very <laughs> interesting because it's Wild West style. But there's no sand or trees. It's yeah, but it's not part. it's not dusty and sandy. There's actually trees and plants. All and they, yeah, they got concrete too. You know. Yeah. <laughs> So that's, that's why the first time I saw this picture, I was, I was like, huh, I think something is off. Because usually yeah. when you see these kinds of, of uh, I guess, style of building, you would expect like desert light, you know, or cactuses, not those um, trees and grass. Yes. Uh, let's see what else we have here. 
So uh, they also have colonial buildings, just like what you like. I said, what you see the pictures, which are set amongst coconut and mango trees along the beachfront. You can also see the Royal Hotel, founded in the uh, late 1860s. Workers' cottages, the Shell Button factory site, and the former, I think it's called Kako Kakobau Parliament House. Right. Yeah. yeah, which is now the European Memorial. All right, so before we move on, our background seems to have changed again. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, we, it's we not are, Colorado anymore. What is this place? We are now in a Jackson Hole Town Square. Um, yeah, well, I mean... I wanted to say that I'm actually where the background is at, but that would be weird because people will be looking at me if I'm doing that, if I'm doing what I'm doing there, you know? Okay, so we're just updating the uh, background and making sure we uh, give courtesy to the right people, I guess. Unfortunately, we can't. <laughs> yeah, we, unfortunately, we can't check who it's from. But I will, triple I'll, question mark. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll put it because we can't see it from here. Uh, but we, I'll put it on the credits later. Yeah, the text on top you see right, oh, right there is uh, pretty much I think it's just some kind of label in their camera. In their camera. Yeah. That's that's what clued us in. Alrighty. Oh, what what is this? Lithuania. Oh no, it wasn't Barbados. It was <laughs> Lithuania. Okay, it was Lithuania, but that was from last week, so we're not gonna talk oh, about okay. it. Oh, okay. We're gonna skip that. I have not skipped that slide. That's weird. <laughs> anyway, stuff of the day. Remember, we will be talking about stuff, things that are found underwater. Time for some underwater awesomeness. Let's start with our animal of the day, the frogfish. So this is called a frogfish because its front legs, can you guys see it right here? Those are, I mean, they could be used or the frogfish basically use it as, as kind of like fins too, but most of the time they use it as legs, which is similar to a frog. That's the name, frogfish. And this fish actually walks underwater. <laughs> so uh, that kind of sounds unusual, you know? So I'm going to guess that he is a bottom feeder. He likes to eat um, things that are crawling at the bottom of the seabed. Yes. Uh, well, also a small fish that, uh, you know, that wanted to uh, swim deeper. Yeah, because it's much easier to walk at the bottom than swim. Of course. Because you have more traction. Oh, wait, no. I can't say of course. I haven't been really... Uh, so deep i mean i've been to an ocean floor or a sea floor but it's not really that deep well that it's just deep, my guesses deep. yeah it, it's just my guesses because um anytime an animal evolves a certain way there is a reason for it true yeah. i mean there's a function if, yeah. whenever they uh, develop some uh a part of their body yeah so unlike many animals that use camouflage as a defense uh, from you know predators as you know some some of them actually do hide from predators and they kind of uh adapt the color around their environment we right? talk about a lot of animals of the day so um you guys should know what predators and prey and are preys. at this point predators are the species that hunt the other animals mm -hmm. to eat them and then the animals that they hunt are the prey there you go yeah so um unlike uh, many animals that uh, camouflage or hide themselves through uh, by adapting the colors so they won't be eaten the frogfish does the opposite it actually hides and camouflage itself and then uh, what it actually does um, is it has this uh, what do you call this kind of like um, like an antenna like? thing okay. on top I think it's on the next picture right there right there yeah so it has that antenna thing um, th that he th that it uses to lure uh, its food, its snack, okay. you know. But it camouflages. Uh, so it looks it looks like a smaller fish, and then that whatever you were right, tries to you were right there, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. That well, whoever right tries to eat that that thing, that antenna, will realize quickly that it's not an antenna. Yes, I don't even know if it will have time to realize it because <laughs> once it, you know, once it comes close there, uh, there you go. It's uh, the the frogfish would swallow them whole, you know. 
But anyways, uh, the frogfish uh, does its camouflage skills to actually hunt, not to hide. Yeah. So. Okay. And then um, we talked. We already talked about the antenna. It's uh, used as a lure, and once they take the bait, you know that's it. They get swallowed. Um, if ever they don't get swallowed, they are able to take a bite of that. Uh, wonderful snack right there uh it's not really a problem for the frogfish since that part actually grows back yeah see like so, i said every part of the animal has, has a use has a use and yeah if the use of that is to bait then it better grow back because then you yeah because like <laughs> it, it won't be able to use any other yeah. bait. you know um frogfish are carnivores meaning they eat uh they don't eat plants they eat other fish and uh even actually even other frogfish so <laughs> i guess they have a cannibalistic trait you know um another amazing thing about frogfish is that its mouth can expand up up to 12 times its resting size well so, that's why they could eat other frogfish so uh, i i don't know <laughs> i mean like if i can do that i it's probably gonna take me five sec less than five seconds to finish my lunch you know <laughs> just do that uh, frogfish can grow up to 22 inches that's about uh, less than two feet you know yeah uh, and are usually found in tropical and subtropical oceans and seas of seas of the uh, coast of Africa Asia Australia and North America moving on our plan of the day we'll talk about seagrass yes uh, you know this picture is supposed to be under the sea because you you could see a fish in yes. there i cannot really point in there because my hand's gonna get cut off no oh. you can oh the, that's the, cool yeah the, right I, there. I made sure that the camera is a uh, uh, long wait that, where's the limit at this that's is the, the limit. limit okay yeah. so right there i can get really as close away. yeah see that fish right there i made i made sure that the camera is really long so because like i also point at things oh screen. i see okay well again thank you Ion, for setting the whole thing up you know Okay, so yeah, this is a grass under the sea. Okay, um, yeah, sea grasses. This are, is not just regular grass that JR painted blue. Nope. I mean, you can use it as a wallpaper, but is it's more real than a wallpaper. Yes. Sea grasses are one of the most productive plant communities on Earth. They are flowering plants that live underwater, because we're talking about underwater things, um, and because they require sunlight they are found mostly in waters that are shallow not so deep because they still need sunlight yeah know? the deeper you are the less light gets through yes because the water will absorb some of the light true here in this country florida has over 2.5 million acres of seagrass meadows and seven different species exist in in florida waters okay so why is seagrass important well, just like how our uh, land grass, you know, the grass found here on land is important to our animals such as cow, goat, or any other ad land animals that actually use it as food, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, all the difference is, of course, the, it's the fish or the marine life that's our, that are Get eating used, them. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And also, it, uh, the seagrass also provide habitat for... Oh, it says they're actually nearly 70% of all sea life. That's that's a lot. That's a lot These of These are really life. tall grass then. Yes. Uh -huh. Because our grass here in land, <clears throat> the regular ones that you see on the lawns regularly. Oh, yeah. It, it, will, it should be it is taller a, than lawn grass. Yeah, because even though the short <clears throat> ones that you see in the lawn, there's still a habitat for a lot of insects. Insects, though. ants, uh, worms. Yeah, but this one says sea turtles. So that means these grass are really, really tall that it's able to provide shelter for right. something as big as a sea turtle. Oh, it's, well, it even says and here, dolphins. even dolphins. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, sometimes if a dolphin kind of like, hey, I just, you know what? I, I kind of feel like laying down on a grass. Yeah. And there you go. Under the grass. More Under likely, the grass, yeah. yeah. And recreationally and commercially important fish and shellfish species such as, you know, redfish, sea trout, snapper, pink shrimp, and blue crabs. So... A lot of a lot of uh, marine life is actually dependent on this seagrass, mm -hmm. so it's really important. Uh, the thing, though, unfortunately, is that uh, on other parts of the world, the seagrass are facing dangers because of the water pollution. Oh, so, uh oh, you know, it's uh, it's kind of unfortunate. Um, that is why it's always a good reminder for everyone, to us, us included, you know, that uh, there are other life forms that live 
under the sea and uh, we as humans need to be considerate you know we got to be considerate not because of, oh i got trash or uh, i don't want it in my house because you know it's, i uh, mean it's remember remember the saying you you do unto others what you want to be done unto you true yeah. imagine if all the all the sea creatures they're, they're started pooping into <laughs> land like in front of your house constantly that the air gets polluted and it's nothing but bad smells everywhere uh, that's that's messed up though, I, isn't it yeah i'm pretty sure if, if the marine animals or like sharks or even octopus or squid if they can throw the ships back if they sink <laughs> or, hey you forgot your trash you no, know? actually like, the ships itself uh, they like because they oh, act like corals okay so they become shelters not plastics but, definitely but, not plastics. yeah the plastics the the chemicals that we throw into oh the sea, yeah like, that's unfortunately, the bad yeah, stuff unfortunately that, you yeah. know like um factories or some uh some uh well yeah factories mainly uh their waste especially chemical waste uh some of them unfortunately go straight to the sea it's mm -hmm. it's not it's not cool and, you know? and it's not even straight sometimes they it goes to the river because they think oh it's a it's just a river but then you guys know where the rivers go <laughs> like, yeah eventually it's gonna end up to the sea so all right moving on we have the uh what's next i think art of the day yeah yes. okay so for our of the day our art of the day <laughs> i kind of said the word our and art is in that one a word. lady looking at a cell phone it is we have this awesome underwater sculpture sculptures because there's a lot of people walking by by jason taylor yeah there's even just like ian said there's even uh one sculpture right there that looks like she's on the phone or something yeah so uh jason taylor became the first of the new generation of artists to shift uh the concepts of uh, uh, the uh, land art movement into the realm of the marine environment. He gained international notoriety in 2006 with the creation of the world's first underwater sculpture park, situated off the west coast of Grenada in the West Indies. Now it's listed as one of the top 25 wonders of the world by National Geographic. The park was instrumental in the government declaring the site a national marine protected area. They have to because, you know, <laughs> having a sculpture underwater means it's susceptible to the water eroding. Eroding, yeah. yeah, yeah. So they have to so you constantly, guys... like, protect this stuff, right? Right. Uh -huh. And I don't know if you guys can see, it might be too small, but some parts, as you can see, like the first person on the phone right there, um what do you call this it it actually kind of shows the knee part is kind of eroding already yeah i don't know if you guys can see it yeah because yeah. when, when something erodes underwater the bottom part starts first because that's where all the sediments and um minerals mm -hmm. are moving around and, and that's so the kind of like chips away yeah i would i was gonna say scratch it up but yeah i think chip chips away is a better term yeah i was surprised because you would think that if there are sculptures and statues underwater it was something ancient that just that just <laughs> sank underwater I, I have a different thought because i was thinking that if i haven't learned about this and uh i started you know scuba diving and all uh and then i see this i would think you, there's some you, kind of a cursed monster who turned everyone into stone and they they just got you, swallowed you by just, the sea you just swim away like no Dude, no <laughs> it's like i don't want to go there <laughs> it's like oh no th this person is only like texting and turn she turned into stone not realizing that why would she be texting in underwater? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, I couldn't get in a reception in here. I guess I'm uh, I'm too deep in the sea. <laughs> but anyways, um, just a full disclosure: uh, Jason Taylor is not doing the sculpture underwater. Okay, I don't want you guys thinking that she's actually, uh, or he's actually going down to do the sculpt the sculpting. The part, uh, the sculpting part, is done here on on land. That would be really hard to do. But I mean, if he does, then yeah, that's gonna be more props to him, you know. But, uh, but I guess the reason is he's just really passionate about this, and in fact, he actually had a—he already had a collection of over 500, 500 of these sculptures, and this is just some of them that you see. Um, in 2009, he co—co-founded he co MUSA or the or the uh, uh, Museo Subacuático de Arte. Uh, this um, museum is found uh, between Cancun and Isla Mujeres in Mexico. Um, yeah, so 
uh, like I said, he uh, already had at least 500 of these sculptures, and this picture is just one of them. Uh, there's more actually, uh, but yeah, it takes some time. So if he tries to do the sculpting underwater, I don't think he would be having at least 100 up to now. If yes. we started 2006, it, it will take while. forever. Because every time you you do the sculpting underwater and then you have to worry about eroding and all. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, the, here's the thing. Uh, what You would wonder, why would you want to put sculptures underwater? And Oh yeah, that's okay. I mean, like, who's gonna see it? Not a lot of people will see it, right? Yeah. But you could see it right here. Um, the reason is you you get the kind of gradient look of like blue mm, it, it, right there it, yeah. yeah it gives it a blue and then it's not just one one tint of blue it is just it, 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 well, is, it is a, a gradient soft, yeah. yeah so from soft to hard from yeah. light to dark uh, and that's hard blue. to produce on top of uh, on land you know, even you if know? we have a clear sky yeah, yeah even uh -huh. with a clear, clear sky you, you might still see a couple of clouds or because the statues are on the ground you would see like buildings or trees or something he, he seems to just want like the, a foggy effect that is blue mm -hmm. that seems like it and yeah. I think um, he was not really worried about uh, having a lot of people see it because I mean today's technology you can just have one scuba diver diver sorry uh, go deep and start recording and stuff and uh, show it in you know in YouTube yeah. like what we're doing exactly. right now so yeah but of course to see it personally that will be a that would be an awesome yes. uh, time you know you have to be submerged to, in order for you to do that <laughs> and the speaking segue. of <laughs> and speaking of submerge that is our word of the day it's submerge it is a verb it can have two meanings uh, the main meaning basically the first meaning um, the most obvious meaning is the uh, cost to be underwater. Okay. So those statues are submerged. Those statues, for example, are submerged. Yes. But because uh, we're, we're using that as an adjective, since the word is submerged, we have to use a verb. Uh, what's the, the guy's name again? Oh, Jason Taylor. So yeah. Jason Taylor submerged. That's past tense. It's uh, still a verb. verb. Mm -hmm. um, submerged the statues underwater. There we go. There you go. Now we used it as a verb. But if you're not talking about uh, anything that's related to water, it can still be used as a, with a different meaning, and it means to completely cover or obscure. Like um, that wall that we used for green screen, we submerged it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Submersion green. It might, it might be a little unusual to use it, uh, to use it with the uh, second definition, but, yeah. but it can be. It can be. It can, it can be. be. And our uh, fun fact of the day, um, in the Pacific Ocean, somewhere between Guam and the Philippines, lies the uh, Mariana Trench. You guys heard of that? Mariana Trench? It's a uh, trench that has the deepest point of the ocean. And the deepest part of the uh, ocean, or deepest point of the ocean located in that trench, is called the Challenger Deep. And if you're wondering how deep it is, it's about 35,814 feet. That's a lot of feet. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a lot of miles too. And that's, uh, well, they're still um, researching about it right now, but that's pretty much the average. Because you can't, you know, if it's that deep, it's kind of hard to actually get an exact uh, measurement. But with, you know, with the today's technology and all, it's kind of easier to get an estimate. But again, it's not again. It, it's not. I mean, we again. could we could we could uh, get information <laughs> on distant stars that we can't ever visit. True. Just true. by uh -huh. just by um, measuring the light that that has reached our planet. Mm -hmm. In fact, because because there's so, some of the stars that we talk about, their light reaches Earth, and then we study them. They might have not existed anymore right at this moment. True. Yeah. Because uh -huh. it takes so many years to travel for that light to travel. Sometimes it's kind of hard to, uh, if we're talking about cosmic scale, you know, it's kind of hard to sometimes comprehend that the fact that you're seeing uh, a light out there may not have existed already. Yeah. Yeah, that's just how wonderful science is or, you know, basically the uh, 
existence is existence yeah. existence is, we, you we know? don't know everything and that's what keeps people curious yeah and even here on <laughs> our own planet you think okay yeah we don't know anything Exa- outer space exactly but as you see here with the the challenger deep we, we kind of don't know anything on our own planet because yeah. not anything we don't know a lot oh. Because not there all, are, not all. Yeah, yeah, there's parts where we can't even like journey into. Yeah, and you, you would think that hey, well, what's the big deal? Because it's, I mean, it's Earth. It's not like you're gonna ride a spacecraft or anything, right? Well, you know, there are there are things that you have to consider. Also, um, the uh, one thing for sure is the deeper you go in the ocean floor, the uh, the higher the pressure is. You know, it, uh, that could actually crush a person uh, even in a suit. Yeah, water is not nothing. What the the deeper you go, the more it feels like you are carrying all uh, that water. The weight, yeah. the weight, yeah. So that all that water is gonna start to squeeze you. Oh, there you go. Squeeze is the best yeah. term, yeah. Uh-huh. And and to to illustrate that, uh, there's this uh, entry about yeah, Mr. The, Jacques yeah, you, Picard. You guys see the third part right there. Only yeah. three people have made the journey all the way to the bottom. Mm-hmm. Okay, in that that happened in 1960. In uh, or I think their group is called Trieste, descending mm-hmm. carrying Jackie Picard, Jacques, Pic- Jacques, Jacques, Jackie's Picard, no, Jock, like Jock, Jock. like oh, just Jock, like, like the, the English name Jack, but, but it's with an oh, not Jock, a. like a jockey, yeah, but like without a jockey, the key. yeah, yeah Jock. Jock Picard and Don Walsh. So they what what happened was they they descent they descended you know they, they went, went down, down. Uh, it took them five hours going down um, and then what happened was uh, they got a crack in their window on their submarine. And this is not just some regular old window. No 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 of course it's not. It's a very no. reinforced window and it's still cracked because it of the did. fact that we told told you guys about that the water <laughs> will start to squeeze you harder and harder the. The more you go below, mm-hmm. so uh, imagine traveling uh, five hours to go all the way down on the ocean floor in the deepest part of uh, the ocean, and then suddenly <laughs> your your <laughs> ride just cracked. And apparently, they only were able to spend twenty minutes. So, but of course, I'm pretty well, sure. Well, they spent twenty minutes, and then they saw the crack, and then you would. They thought, if the water could crack something that is very hard. I w- I'm not gonna stay here to wonder how will it of course <laughs> like, affect me yeah. as a squishy person. So they just started going back up. Right? Yeah, so I would think that's gonna be another five hours going back up because that's uh, they, it took them five hours going down. But you know, compared to 20 minutes, it's it's not it's not even half an hour. That's how dangerous uh, the ocean floor is. Yeah. You know. Plus, you can't see anything. Plus, you can't. Well, given that they would have some kind of uh, a lighting on, like you uh, would bring like a, a light, head, yeah, like a headlight, because the sunlight doesn't go down below there anymore. Yeah. Uh huh. So, yeah, it was tough. Um, what do you call this? But did you know that there are animals that still live in that? Um, because remember when I say about animals, they grow or they adapt to wherever they live. Right. So the animals that live in these very tough environments, they have grown and adapted to being mm-hmm. able to withstand that squeezing that the water has done. Water True. pressure. True. And, and like then I guess example, we'll, we'll they... show it on an animal of the day in the future. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was just going to say, uh, you know, like uh, since Ian's talking about those animals who are adapting, it, uh, depending on their environment and considering that the, the sunlight doesn't go through that deep you know in the ocean some of the these marine animals develop uh, uh, some kind of uh, like they are able to generate light on their own which they is either cool. generate light on their own luminescence or, or something or yeah. or they are bioluminescence yeah. is the term or like they're their basically term. blind because oh, they and have, that one too uh-huh. they, they figure they don't need eyes they have no use for but, ice because there's no light right so what they do is they just develop some other way to f- kind of feel what's around them uh, instead of seeing what's around them yeah and what is this oh nothing i was uh i was thinking of recording the <laughs> wiki emoji uh, separately but I'll, I'll have to do it later um well we're still gonna have but, but are uh, you still gonna want it to put it on the video or yeah no? yeah of course we're gonna put it in the well video. then i guess you should um introduce it then <laughs> oh okay well well i'm gonna skip this slide right here 
<laughs> oh, I mean, that, that, that's like, because that's not part of it. Let me just do the end real quick. And that is our show today, guys. Hope you like it and hope you learned something new. If you wanted to talk to us about the topics we discussed today, uh, leave a comment below, okay? Once again, thank you, Ian, for helping me out in this new settings. I think I'm more comfortable doing this. I'm probably going to start doing this um, yeah. whole thing now. I, I, I do sound more natural, right? Yes. Or maybe because I'm just talking to you too, aside well, that, from that's, talking to you guys, you know? That's basically what I told you when you first started doing videos since April, is that to sound natural, you have to pretend that the camera is a person. Yeah. I was trying that, but, but I guess it's hard I'm, to pretend. But I guess I'm too busy <laughs> reading my script if I'm doing it by myself. I, yes. I do have I use a teleprompter, you know. But uh, yeah, uh, guys, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, as always, we'll see you on the next one. Peace. Hey guys, it's Ian here. Before you go, let me tell you that the Jackson Hole, Wyoming background was brought to you by YouTube channel. Jackson Hole. And that you should stay tuned because JR is going to host a game for you after this. Okay guys, time for our fun and games. Last part of our show today, we are doing Wikimoji. And uh, you guys already know, you will have three um, puzzles to solve. You know, try to guess the word based on the emoji. And you will have 30 seconds. I will... Because I'm kind of covering the, the background. You're probably not going to see the answers later. So I don't know when I'll be gone. But I will be gone later. Okay. Um, I get, Oh, well, yeah. I'm going to start the timer now. In three, two, one, go. So um, you got 30 seconds to solve three puzzles. Try your best to think of the right word or the best word that would match with the emojis. And... Uh, we got 15 seconds left. <laughs> I'll give you guys a clue. It has all of those have something to do with water. That's not even a clue because it, yeah, because you see, because you see water emoji already. Three, two, one. Time's up, guys. I hope you got some answers. And I guess it's time for me to reveal the answers. Okay, there we go. Well, the answers are going to be revealed in, in one go. So, um, the answers for today's puzzles, uh, for today's Wiki Emoji puzzle is... Ta-da! Go, we got some baby shower, number one. Number two is sound wave. And the number three might be a little, I don't know, um, tricky in a way. Number three is waterfall. If you guys want to know why, because I use the leaves for fall and water a droplet of water there you guys have it if you guys uh, were able to answer all of those congratulations and next time make sure that the wiki emoji is at the left side of the screen so I don't have to move you <laughs> <laughs> true well uh, to be fair my slides are actually not uh, yeah, it's adjusted not, it's on, not on this new you. yeah on this new <laughs> format yet so but it's still fun right so I, w I guess I will be moving in the video. <laughs> I will be moving around. Yeah, that's what it will look like. So I guess you guys. I hope you guys had fun. There we go. <laughs>